I hate troubleshooting PC software. Biggest pain hands down. Hardware is simple because you only have a finite number of pieces with which to tamper and remove to kind of narrow down your choices. But after you've done that, you only have software left. It could only be a software or hardware issue when it comes to PCs or maybe a networking issue, but I would still call that software. So in my cases, there were two of them. My CPU was not running up to spec and my GPU SLI config, and there's the two 1080s. Uh, those are just reference PCBs if you're wondering. Those were not scaling properly. So my frame rates were actually better with a single 1080 than they were being SLI, which was really confusing, and that one I still haven't completely figured out. We're gonna dive into this video, what I did to diagnose first the CPU issue, and then uh, kind of narrow down what could have caused the graphics cards to scale incorrectly in SLI. So let's start first with the CPU. Now disclaimer up front, I don't have a script or anything like that in front of me. This is just me expressing my concerns and kind of trying to figure out what exactly went wrong because a few of you uh, did express similar concerns on Twitter when I was venting over there. I was trying to get advice. I was trying to say, hey, help me. I've never seen this before. Uh, so I have an idea what could have caused these issues. So we'll address those in this video. First with the CPU, that one I am pretty sure I know what was wrong, at least generally speaking, uh, what was wrong there. So so I noticed that my CPU was not performing up to spec in that my rendering times in Adobe Premiere were taking too long. Uh, usually it's about a minute for minute with a 1080p 60fps file. So a five minute video in Adobe Premiere takes about five minutes to export using the H.264 YouTube 1080p preset. Well, that was not happening uh, recently. There's dust floating in here. Uh, recently, it's been taking eight, nine minutes for a five minute video file. That was annoying and it definitely caught my attention. So being the curious individual I was, I decided to open up Cinebench. This is all before I decided to make this video, mind you, and run a benchmark. I assumed that if the CP wasn't performing up to spec that I would see that difference in the score itself. And sure enough, my i7-6700K clocked to 4.5 gigahertz was only achieving a score of 820, and I confirmed multiple times that no other major background processes were running. So what the heck was causing this? And it was by this time that I started noticing my frame rates were nowhere near what they should have been considering two 1080s were packed inside of this build. I assumed partly that the CPU was to blame. It wasn't performing like an i7 should, it was actually more on par with like a severely overclocked i5. Like a 7600K at 5 gigahertz will score close to this score here in Cinebench. So it was almost like hyper-threading wasn't active, but hardware monitor was showing all eight threads on the 6700K running at 100%. On top of that, Ida64 confirmed that no thermal throttling was present on the chip, period. So uh, not during a benchmark, not during idle situations. The CPU temperatures were fine, core and package, I have a custom loop in here, the temperatures barely hit 70C, even with a 4.6 GHz overclock and a 1.37 vCore. I checked page filing, I checked RAM, I, I checked everything that I could. The last thing I decided to do was hop into the BIOS. The BIOS still confirmed everything that I thought was already good to go. The frequency was at 4.5 gigahertz. Uh, the voltage was, at, I think at the time, 1.35 volts. And uh, DDR4 was running at 3200 megahertz. Actually under spec, it was 3600 out of the box, but I just, I downclock it just in case because sometimes those higher profiles can cause instabilities with Windows 10. At this point, you could imagine my frustration. Why was my i7 not performing like an i7? And I said, screw it. I'm just gonna overclock to 4.8 gigahertz and boost the V core to 1.4. CPU didn't like that. This is a Skylake CPU, mind you. So the CMOS had to be reset. And when that happens, everything that you that you predetermined in the BIOS, all the settings, are all reset back to default as they would have been out of the box. And that fixed my issue. I booted back stock into the OS, ran set a bench, and look at there, my score was actually better than it was at, at the 4.5 gigahertz frequency run. I, I have no clue what's going on. I'm telling you, I've done this so many times. I've overclocked so many processors with so many different motherboards and, and UEFIs. But uh, resetting the CMOS ended up fixing the issue. I, I, I don't, I, that's all I, that's all I have. <laughs> Frank, I wish I could tell you more, but if you run into an issue where your CPU doesn't, it doesn't feel like your CPU's performing as it should, then it's probably got something to do with your BIOS, and you should immediately go back into that, clear CMOS, and just start from scratch, keep it very simple, very basic, especially when it comes to overclocks, otherwise you might have a hardware issue, in which case, start part swapping. That's really all I've got for you there. Now on to the graphics cards. This is a science channel. I like to have as many of the answers as possible before filming, but to this point, I still cannot 
explain what happened. I don't know why my frame rate was so terrible as a result of such low GPU usage. That was the issue that I kept trying to Google. I asked people on Twitter, why are my SLI 1080s only being utilized around 30-40% in games when I built Blue Sky way back when? Check out the video on one of these sides here. When I built Blue Sky, the, I was using the exact same 1080 SLI config, and I was achieving way higher frame rates than I was at this point. So I wasn't sure if they weren't running at, at eight, you know, eight lanes each, or if the frequencies were just dropping significantly, maybe thermal throttling. Um, well, I checked the lanes. They were both running at, at X8 3.0, which is what you want with an SLI config at least. 16 by 16 is, is okay as well. So the lane config was fine. Uh, the frequencies were fine. J the usage though was just just way too low and that's why the frame rate was low because the cards weren't being pushed anywhere near their limits. I confirmed that CPU usage was where it should have been so the CPU wasn't holding anything back, my RAM wasn't being maxed out, the page filing was still okay in the clear. At this point, the only thing that I knew to do was completely wipe my OS, that's right I deleted everything on my computer, that's why there's not much on the desktop anymore and reinstall the operating system. I'm currently downloading games now to catch back up to where I was before all of this happened. And that fixed the issue. Check it out. The frame rate is actually much higher. It's it's actually much closer to what it was when I built Blue Sky a few months ago. And now I'm a happy camper, but I'm not happy in the sense that I don't know why it happened. I, I, I hate not being able to explain to all of you at least in some detail, what caused the low GPU usage, um, a few people are just going to automatically default to, well, it's SLI, SLI is just unreliable, Crossfire is unreliable, NVIDIA drivers, blah, blah, blah. I don't think the NVIDIA drivers were to blame because I use the exact same driver after the fresh OS install and the SLI config is now being utilized almost at 100% in every scenario. So... Uh, Maybe the operating system? I'm not going to point fingers at a particular thing, but I think that there was some setting in Windows that may have changed without me knowing, or maybe I did it just accidentally, that was severely holding back the cards. I went through everything on Google, I went through the NVIDIA control panel, I made sure that everything was sent to performance and that I wasn't holding any of the cards back, trust me, I, I did everything that you guys suggested on Twitter and more and nothing until the fresh OS install gave me any result at all. I even have a G-Sync monitor hooked up and I assume that that was causing it. If you Google GPU usage low 1080s SLI, the first thing that comes up is a G-Sync issue where for some reason the SLI config doesn't work well with G-Sync and they end up pushing far fewer frames than they should and that's why the cards don't work very hard. Uh, but turning that off did nothing for me. It actually made things slightly worse on screen visually. So that's kind of where I have to end the video. Uh, if you are in doubt, I know it sucks. I hate recommending fresh OS install because it takes a lot of time and you have to back up a ton of files. And if you don't do that, then you're gonna be sitting around for days reinstalling all of the programs that you previously had on your operating system. But that cured my cancer. And I think that uh, I'm just gonna be very careful about where I go, where I click in the operating system, in the NVIDIA control panel from now on. Just don't do anything that you, that you aren't familiar with. Don't click on something that you, are, are not sure what it does uh, and don't change settings that aren't in game. If you change things outside of game settings then it's going to affect your entire system, it will affect every game that you play from there on out. Just a few words of wisdom, take them from someone who basically trialed and errored for the past three days. I am proud to say though that whatever I did by installing the operating system all over again fixed the graphics card utilization issue, again the BIOS CMOS reset uh, fixed the CPU, I don't know, it's just this dirty overclock I guess is what that was, but it fixed it. Those are last resorts, but there are surefire ways to fix software issues. If that doesn't fix whatever you're trying to fix, then you might have a serious hardware issue, one that you can't fix yourself. With that, give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Give it a dislike if you just hate everything about life or you just dislike the video because you think I don't know what I'm doing, whatever. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video, another car video coming up. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.